So here's how you can know if you've got the power switch issue. You just play a note and wobble the power switch. You get that type of effect. The other night I tried to fix the power switch on my SH-101. There are a few approaches to it. So I tried the easiest approach, which is you just lift off this power button, which comes off relatively easily. And then you can try and spray some contact cleaner around the edge of the button and, and operate it a few times to try and clean it up. Now that didn't uh, work very well. I, it seemed to help a bit. If you only had um, a small problem with the power switch, then that would be a good approach. What I did was to bypass the switch. And I will um, take you through the process of bypassing the switch in this video as well. The plan for today is to replace the switch entirely from one that I've, I've got from circuitbenders.co.uk. Taking it apart and, and all that will be the same if you want to try and bypass the switch, which is a, a cheap and easy way to do it. I've got two Phillips screwdrivers here, a medium sized one and a, and a fairly chunky one. First thing you do is you take off the back watch out for the pitch knob because you don't want to break that. These two screws are a bit different from the others. They are actually machine threaded screws. The others are coarse threaded. So now this back cover will just lift off like this. And actually at this point, if you wanted to tune your SH-101, then that's only as far as apart as you need to take it. Uh, but we want to do more. We want to replace the power switch. I'm going to pad, put some padding underneath the SH-101 because I don't want to damage. So the power switch is here. Now, unfortunately, it is uh, required in order to access this to remove two circuit boards. Now, if you want to do the bypass method, you don't need to remove the circuit boards. At this point, you can do a soldering job on these joints here where the switch attaches. And I'm going to put a photo uh, up now. So if you want to do the bypass method, you, you know where to solder. In order to replace the switch, we've got to take out more of these boards because it's super hard to manipulate this with everything in place. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the pitch bend board. This has a few um, connections on it. Big one, this small one, and this one here, which is actually held on by a screw. Now this screw also holds on the indicator for um, the battery cover. Be careful not to lose that. And then we need to take off a whole bunch of screws to remove this brown circuit board. There are quite a few of these and it is very easy to miss them. This can now fold up. And we can remove this black plastic piece, which is, as I say, the indicator for the for the batteries. This is where the um, the power switch is attached that we want to try and replace. So we need to remove the screws for the green circuit board, and there's quite a few of those as well. There is one more screw which you access through this hole on the pitch bend circuit board. You don't actually need to remove the pitch bend circuit board for this operation. 
So I'm going to flip it back over and remove these control knobs. So if it's an oscillator, either the LFOs or the noise or the, the sawtooth or the, the square, then the slider is green. If it is a smaller switch control like the Octave control, the LFO selection for the pulse width or the envelope gate, a small toggle like this, then it is a yellow control. And all the other controls are orange. Now this green board can be released. So the power switch is this thing here. And I'm going to take a desoldering pump now and remove it. The switch is here, so I need to remove all of these pins. Most of them aren't actually used, but there are eight pins. Honestly, that's so much easier if you're thinking of getting a desoldering pump. Just, um, just bite the bullet, I would say, if you're doing this type of work, even one or two jobs, it, it pays back. So at this point, I can ease out the old switch. So there is a video where someone shows how to clean the switch. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go directly for a replacement switch. These are the switches from circuitbender.com. They are actually a little different to the original Roland switch. The original Roland switch has um, eight pins on it. If you can just about see that. The circuit bender replacement actually only has um, six pins. But it's not a problem. The rest of the switch is the same and, and it works just fine because Roland didn't use all the, the pins on the switch anyway. What it does mean though is you have to be slightly careful about um, putting the, this back. So what you want is to have it so that the upper six pins of the switch are, are the ones that, that get soldered onto the board. So orientate this the same way the previous switch was put in and you want it so that you're using the top six holes. I'm going to put uh, this solder behind it just to hold it in place because I don't want that um, flapping around while I'm trying to solder it. Right, all the pins are now soldered in place. So cue a time lapse of me uh, putting all this back together. <laughs> So let's try the new power switch. Tuning completely stable. <laughs>